Today, we're plunging into the captivating realm of ancient mysteries. We'll be unearthing five unsolved puzzles that continue to perplex us. With this in mind, we present five ancient mysteries that remain unsolved. Let's dive in without further ado. Our first mystery in today's video isn't an unusual event or a lost city, but a person. His person is none other than Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra. Born to nomadic parents in what is now eastern Iran, he reportedly became a priest in his youth before experiencing a divine revelation at the age of 30. This revelation laid the foundation for Zoroastrianism, a religion famously practiced by the ancient Persians and the not-so-ancient Freddy Mercury. Zoroaster's influence extends beyond powerful empires and globally renowned musicians. Some historians believe that Zoroastrianism's tenets have influenced other religions, including the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Interestingly, Zoroastrianism is still practiced in parts of Iran and India today, making it one of the world's oldest continuous religions. While we have a fair understanding of Zoroaster's religious ideas, the man himself is almost as mythical as the gods he preached about. Historians are uncertain about his birthplace and even his birthday. The more conventional historical consensus is that Zoroaster lived around the same time as Cyrus the Great, the founder of the first Persian Empire, which would place his life around the 7th century BCE. However, Cyrus's life also has a few historical gaps. Around this time, history was less about factual accuracy and more about storytelling. This is why the Persian Empire is often portrayed as despotic and tyrannical, even though they were, in technical terms, quite relaxed. The negative image of the Persian Empire largely comes from Herodotus, a Greek historian known as the father of history, who included many clear legends in his historical writings. This means that we can't take his writings at face value and must discern what's real and what's not. As a result, it's challenging to separate the legends surrounding both Cyrus and Zoroaster from the actual historical facts, a common issue in ancient history studies. Considering this, some scholars believe that Zoroaster could have lived as far back as the 6th millennium BCE. This is quite a rough estimate, but it's the best we can do with the available information. If we want to learn more, we'll likely have to go to Iran, which we're probably not going to do. Next up in this video, we're delving into the Late Bronze Age Collapse, a topic you might be familiar with if you're a history buff. This period is one of history's greatest puzzles. Around 1200 BCE, several mighty empires, including the Hittites, the Babylonians, and the Mycenaean Greeks, thrived in the eastern Mediterranean and Mesopotamia. Yet, 50 years later, they disappeared. Archaeological evidence suggests that nearly every major city in the eastern Mediterranean was violently destroyed, many never to be inhabited again. So, what led to the downfall of these once powerful states? While we've made strides in researching the Bronze Age collapse, historians have tentatively settled on the systems collapse theory. Essentially, everything stopped functioning all at once, akin to the internet and TV going out, all the Starbucks closing, and the world collapsing overnight. There were likely famines, natural disasters, and shortages of tin, a crucial component of bronze. Additionally, there's substantial evidence for a group of people referred to as the Gisi peoples. They were an ethnically diverse confederation of peoples originally from the western Mediterranean who migrated via sea to the eastern Mediterranean. They were highly successful in warfare, with historical precedent for armies of unified groups conquering vast territories and annihilating entire towns. Genghis Khan, we're looking at you. Diving into the annals of history, we encounter Genghis Khan, the most formidable conqueror known to mankind. He unified the diverse nomadic tribes of Mongolia into an unbeatable force, leading a military campaign across the Eurasian continent. His successors continued his conquests, establishing the largest land empire in history. Notably, descendants of Genghis Khan, including Timur and Babur, established their own empires. Genghis Khan passed away in August 1227, and the exact cause of his death remains a mystery. His body was returned to Mongolia, where a grand mausoleum was built as his tomb. However, this mausoleum is not his final resting place, it's a memorial, not a tomb. So, where was Genghis Khan buried? We have no idea. He requested a quiet burial without any markings or signs, and his wishes were followed. His body was returned to Mongolia after his death, and it's believed that, somewhere near the Onan River. This is a surprisingly humble end for a man who etched his name into history with so much bloodshed and conquest. Let's rewind about a thousand years to the Roman Empire, an era when history starts to become less muddled. Legends still exist, but it's relatively straightforward to distinguish them from historical fact. However, Roman history still has its mysteries. 
One of the most baffling is the ultimate fate of the Ninth Legion. The story of the Ninth begins with Julius Caesar, who inherited the legion when he became governor of Cisalpine Gaul, present-day northern Italy. Caesar led the legion throughout the Gallic Wars and the Roman Civil War. After emerging victorious from the Civil War, he disbanded the legion and settled the veterans in the Italian countryside. These veterans were later recalled by Caesar's adopted son, Octavian, to fight another civil war and transform him into the emperor we now know as Augustus. The legion spent some time moving around between Spain, Germany, Macedonia, and other places before it was finally stationed on the island of Britain. The legion was present during Boudicca's rebellion in 61 CE, where it suffered a catastrophic defeat against her. Afterwards, the legion was reinforced, but the streak of bad luck continued when, in the year 82 CE, the Roman general Agricola had them invade Caledonia, a mythical and legendary place of wonder and magic known today as Scotland. The Caledonians nearly annihilated the legion in a surprise nighttime attack, but the men fought them off and later won a decisive victory at the Battle of Mons Grapius. With yet another victory under their belts, the men of the Ninth returned to Roman territory, where they promptly vanished from the historical record. We have no idea what happened to them after Agricola's invasion. There is one stone tablet which states that the Ninth were present at York, rebuilding a fort in the year 108. After that, they're just not mentioned ever again. There are inscriptions of them afterwards that were found in the Netherlands, but some scholars argue that these were just detachments of the Ninth rather than the entire legion itself. So, what happened to them? The most dramatic account is that the Ninth marched once more into the Caledonian frontier, where it was never heard from again. This theory of annihilation in northern Britain was thought to be supported by the discovery of a damaged Roman eagle sculpture in the town of Silchester, which was believed to possibly be the eagle standard of the Ninth Legion. Unfortunately, some archaeologists think that this eagle is just scrap metal and has nothing to do with the Ninth Legion. Other theories suggest that the Ninth Legion met its end in Judea during the Second Jewish Revolt against the Romans from 132 to 135, or was destroyed by the Parthians during the reign of Marcus Aurelius. However, these theories are not foolproof, and there's a lack of evidence that the Ninth was even in the eastern part of the empire during these two time periods. What we do know for certain is that around the year 200 CE, the Ninth Legion did not exist, as it is not included in two independent but identical lists of the 33 existing legions of the time. So, for now, the ultimate fate of the Ninth Legion remains a mystery. Shifting our focus to South America, specifically Peru, we find the Nazca Lines. These are a collection of enormous geoglyphs created between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The majority of the lines are simple geometric shapes, but many of the glyphs depict various designs of plants and animals. They were created simply by drawing lines in the sand and exposing different colored sand underneath. Despite being merely drawings on the ground, they've existed for more than a thousand years at the earliest, which is truly remarkable. The secret behind their preservation is the incredibly stable climate of the plateau where they're located. There's no wind, no rain, no natural erosion. Walking here is like walking on the moon, your footprints will be there basically forever. Some of these inscriptions are absolutely enormous, many of them made from one continuous line with the largest one around 370 meters long. This suggests that these weren't created by some bored individual with nothing better to do, but rather by an organized effort by a large group of people using a lot of math. So, why were these glyphs created and why were they so large that their true form was only discovered with the advent of the airplane? As is often the case with ancient mysteries, we don't have a definitive answer. Scholars generally believe that there's a religious significance behind the Nazca lines. Some hypothesize that they were created to be seen by deities in the sky. Others suggest that astronomy and constellations may have played a role, which, considering the existence of the Mayans, wouldn't be implausible. Still, others posit that they may have served as a kind of calendar for agricultural purposes. There are several more outlandish theories and explanations regarding the Nazca lines, but honestly, they're just really cool to look at. So, there you have it, 5 ancient mysteries that we haven't yet been able to solve. While some of these, like the Nazca lines, will likely remain mysteries for the foreseeable future, historians are tirelessly working on these. There has been an incredible amount of progress made over just the last 20 years in regard to events like the Bronze Age collapse. Even as we speak, historians are no doubt making progress and piecing together the story of how we got here. Perhaps very soon, this list will have to be updated. Until then, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Thus spoke Zoroaster.